This is my driftwood lamp. Now I was out on a beach, oh, roughly two years ago, and I saw this piece of driftwood, and I knew it could be made into a lamp. So I grabbed it and walked an hour back to my truck, and here it is now. Now, as I just mentioned, I built this two years ago, so I don't actually have footage of me building this, but I'm going to do a step-by-step -step on how I actually built this and go through everything you need to know. So you can build your own drift lamp. So once you've decided on the piece of driftwood that you want to use to make a lamp, you're going to want to clean it. Now, how I went about doing that is first I pressure washed everything down and then I used a coarse brush just like this to clean it. Now you don't want anything too coarse. You don't want to use a wire brush because the wire brush will actually tear up the wood and you want to stay away from that. So after it's been pressure washed, everything's been cleaned off like all the sand, you're going to want to let it sit and dry. Now once it's dry, the first thing you're going to do is finish it. And by finishing I mean sanding it. So I started with 120 grit and then I went all the way up to 220 grit. I didn't go any higher because I wanted to keep that rough, rustic look. Now it's time to level the lamp out so it will sit flat on a tabletop. Now depending on what you have for driftwood, you might not need to do this. If you have just a normal round, you might just need to cut it on a chop saw or cut it flat and you'll be done. But in the case of mine, I had to take three corners off, this corner, this one, and this one. So how I did that is I actually took a belt sander to that and I just kept checking until I liked the stance it had on the tabletop. And if I flip it around here, you can see I actually had to add another piece of driftwood just because there was it was so top heavy that it wanted to tip. Now how I fasten this to the actual piece is I use some finishing nails and some subfloor adhesive. Now the subfloor adhesive I use is called PL400 and it actually dries brown so you can hardly even see it. Next step, we'll be drilling the hole down the center of the piece so we can get the fixture wire through. I used a long 3 8 flexible bit to drill my hole down the center. Now the reason I used the 3 8 bit is because I actually used a 3 8 fixture threaded nipple or threaded rod, however you want to call it. Now I'll go into more detail. Uh, when we get to this step, but that's the reason I use that size hole. Now I'm going to show you the whole assembly for the light socket. Now here you can see a close-up of the threaded nipple. And what I've done is actually put that subfloor adhesive on the threads and then thread it down into the hole I just drilled. I also got a light socket with the chain pull that threads right onto that threaded nipple. Now it's time to wire it up. Now once you put your fixture wire through the actual hole you drilled, through the threaded nipple and then through the bottom of the light socket, we can strip the wires and throw them under the terminals. Now before I go ahead, I have to let you know, electricity is very dangerous, so if you don't feel comfortable doing this, then I'd suggest not doing it. Now the first thing you'll notice is there's a silver and a gold screw. Now your black wire, which is the hot, is carrying the line voltage, and that will go under the gold screw. Now if you look inside where the actual light bulb will go, you'll see the center pin. Now this always has to be the hot which will be the gold screw. Now for the silver screw, that's where your white wire or your neutral will terminate under. And this will be the outside of the socket. Now if you mix these two up, you're gonna have the total opposite. So the outside 
will be hot and the center pin will be the neutral which there's actually a code rule in Canada that you cannot do that now sometimes these fixtures come with two silver screws and it's hard to tell what would be the hot or what would be the neutral now there's a little test you can do with a multimeter and that's called a continuity test you can also test what prong is going to what wire if it's not clearly labeled. Now generally the smaller prong will be the hot and the wider prong will be the neutral but verify that wherever you live because here in Canada that's the case. As well as usually the writing on one of the wires that's also going to be the hot. So in order to do this continuity test, you're going to need a multimeter that actually has this feature. Now the icon you're looking for should look just like this. And to test that, put the two leads together and you should get a beep. That's showing the circuit is complete and now we can test it out. Now to show you again, I'll show you on my other meter that this works. Now all you have to do is select the setting again. And there you go. Now we can use this technique over on our light socket to make sure our terminal screws are correct. Now as you can see, I have one of my prongs on the gold screw, and I'll put the other prong on the center pin inside the actual light. Now when I touch the outside, you'll notice you don't hear a beep, so that means the circuit isn't completed. Now to verify that, I'm going to put the prong on the silver screw and I will touch the outside and you'll hear that beep again. So that means the circuit is completed and we know that we are good to go. So again, the black or the hot goes on the gold screw, the neutral or the white goes on the silver screw. Now that that quick electrical class is over, we can terminate the wires under the screws. Now when terminating the wires, you always want to make sure that the wire is going clockwise. So when you tighten it, it actually sucks the wire around and back under the screw terminal. Now if you put the wire under counterclockwise, when you actually tighten it, it will push the wire out and we don't want that another quick thing is you never want the insulation to be squished under the actual screw after you screw it down but once that's done we can put it all together and we're done with this part of the light I put some straps on the back side where the fixture wire comes out just to tidy things up and we're ready to put the lampshade on. All the items I used in this video can be found at your local hardware store but I'm also going to have links in the description to Amazon where you can buy these. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this video, it actually ended up being a little longer than I expected, but I got some great information in there I think, so hopefully you can make your own driftwood lamp. Now if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, that lets me know you enjoy these videos. Also if you could share this video with your friends, that would really help me out. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.